um, save screen space. If we could all turn off our cameras while Tandra is presenting, that would be great. All right, thank you. from Division of Rehab. Yep. We are delighted to have you here and we're going to turn this session over to you. Okay. I am. I, it looks like I'm looking off. It's just because I'm trying to make sure that Mutasim can get in. Um, Mutasim Faddle is our, um, he handles all of the like contractors for the Office for Blindness and Vision Services. He's the person that, you, um, that contractors will call if they have questions. Yeah, that's him calling. Hold on, give me one sec. Okay, my apologies. He's going. I sent him another one, so he's going to see if he can join. If not, I will field the questions to the best of my ability. Um, as you know, this is an opportunity. Um, Jane um, came to us in the beginning of this process, and we, she wanted to talk about opportunities for individuals um, once you um, completed a training and were certified to be able to provide ser those services, training services to individuals who um, are DOORS consumers. Um, and we've gone through the process of getting this approved. Um, you will um, probably after the new year, get a, um, um, a fact sheet that talks about the services that, um, that, that can be offered and as a, as a vendor, what you can provide. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over um, what you'll see on the fact sheet so that you will understand it. Um, the main the main purpose of this particular job is not is, is a as a vendor is you're responsible for developing coordinating and delivering accessible cell phone instruction for blind deaf blind and low vision consumers as it pertains to the phones provided through the map program so these are this is only for the 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 phones that and the able that we have done over the last few months okay um, and we're calling this position the MAT Rehabilitation Specialist. Just for ease internally, we're calling it the MAT Rehabilitation Specialist. You provide instruction and guidance in the utilization of cell phones enabling adults and youth who are blind, visually impaired, or deafblind to access information and effectively communicate. The position works as part of an interdisciplinary team to ensure necessary services are provided for the consumer to achieve independence in their home and communities in accordance with the individualized plan for employment or the independent living plan. In short, um, that is once you are certified by the MAP program and you have your certificate, you will have the opportunity to complete an application for doors and turn in everything that we, we're asking you to turn in. And I'll get to get, into, get to that in a second. And, and then um, you can just wait for referrals. If we have people who need to be trained um, you may get a referral from a re rehabilitation teacher or from a counselor, okay? Um, the other things that we would hope that you would do besides instruction and making and receiving phone calls, um, helping the person, I know Vishnu um, gave us some information about um, free and reduced cost internet, not necessarily free, but reduced cost internet to talk with them about any resources that you know um, that people can qualify for, you can provide that information, um, and also submit a reports um, based on the services that you provided to the consumer. Let's see. Mm -hmm. In terms of qualification, it is successful, successful completion of the MAT Accessible Telecommunications Training. Um, and I haven't talked with Jane about ongoing training or changes in the telephone. Um, that's something that we'll have to get more into, um, but you will have to provide proof of a certificate from the MAP program. You have to have a reliable means of transportation in case you have to meet someone in their home, and you have to have the ability to pass a background check. Now, when it says reliable means of transportation, that does not mean that you have to drive, just a way to get to where you need to go um, and pass a background check. Um, that's one of the things that Mutasa would have been able to 
um, talk more about. Um, in terms of the application, there is one application um, and it's on our website and it's a doors provider or vendor application. It's a one pager, you fill that out. You send a, a copy of your certificate and a copy of your, um, your resume um, to us. And then it, go, it starts going through the, the certification process in order for us to, so that you can become a vendor. Once you become a vendor, um, you'll get stuff from the state of Maryland if you're not already a vendor. Some people are, are already vendors. Um, and you can go through the whole process if you want to check mail, if you want to direct deposit. Those are things that we can get into um, at a later time. Um, once we get your application, we will review it at OBBS, that is the Office for Blindness and Vision Services. The staff specialist, who is Mutasim Fado, he'll go over everything. If something is not there, he'll call you, return it to you, try to reach you to get the things that may be missing. Um, the director of OBBS, the Office for Blindness and Vision Services, who is Tony March, will review and forward to the director of DOORS. Um, that's how you get um, certified. The amount that we are, are able to pay for the approved MAT rehabilitation specialist is $60 an hour. Um, that's just for the training and $35 an hour for travel. There's also a $35 flat rate missed appointment fee. If someone contacts you at the last minute and says, I'm sorry, or you go somewhere, um, there is a missed appointment fee, a flat rate fee of $35. Um, you, all of that, because you have to sign an agreement, you will have all of that information in the agreement that you sign showing um, all of these rates, these fees. Um, there'll also be, if you don't, um, Mutasim can also show you an appropriate invoice, how to invoice, um, an appropriate report. Um, because this service is typically a um, not like a full drawn out service like it would be for, for AT providers, um, your report it may not be as robust, um, but still important, but still important. Um, Right now, the maximum that we're looking at in terms of when you get a, um, an authorization from us, we're looking at up to six hours. If that needs to change, if it's more than six hours, that has to be approved. We're looking at up to six hours. There, there are people, so because we have the vocational rehab program for people who may need more hours because they need to be able to do more on their phone, we also have uh, independent uh, can't hear you, at least I can't. And Hello? 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 We can hear, I, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. That was Diane. Oh, yeah. I think something happened you, with yeah. her phone. That was Diane. Andrew, I think you're, you're fine to go ahead. Okay. Can, is everything okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I heard some commotion. So I have Mutasim actually in the Hello, office with good me. Afternoon, everybody. Yeah, he's in the background. Um, so what I was saying is because we have like two different um, populations of people that we will be serving. Um, well, actually three. So you have um, we have pre -ets, we have the vocational rehab program, and then we have the independent living older blind program. And depending on the person's goals will determine if they may need more than those initial six hours of training. So, um, any questions? Yes, um, I think this is Erica Tinsley. Okay. So I was um, trying to figure out if, um, the, I think we kind of briefly touched on it before that the services that we're providing, they're in person and they're also virtual or was it something like we can go once or twice in, in person and then follow up in virtual? Is that still, I'm not sure if I got that from you or not. I might've made it up on my own. <laughs> okay, so we, um, in terms of this, we actually didn't, I don't remember talking about that. 
Um, the preference, because if you're if, if it's a person who's very new to it, it really depends on the person. If they're very new to it, the preference would be that you're meeting with the person in person, taking the phone to them, helping them unbox it or um, you know, do various things. Um, if you have a person who um, is more familiar, but they're just learning this particular new phone and you're and they're able to go over some things with you um, and it's appropriate, then absolutely, then we can look at doing something virtually. But however, our preference would be for you to meet with the person in person. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And I think Stephanie has a hand up. I can't see if anybody else has a hand up. Okay, yeah. Yes. Oh, I see Jane and Stephanie. Okay, this is Stephanie Schwartz from the Image Center. Um, and we have a couple questions. We have already gotten referrals. Um, and have actually been been working on them. Um, so I'm not like I guess one of our questions is 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 this going to be retroactive to the the people we've already seen and started training? Um, and then my other question is, we have just hired two new independent living skills people who, we have been working with and using the videos to, to train. Are they, do they need to go through a separate class to then be eligible to get referrals or um, how, how does that work with the new, the new hires? So those are my two questions. Okay, so you have to have a certification or a certificate through the MAP program. However, if they get that, I don't know, Jane, and I mean, I don't know how we're doing it for new people who are coming on and certification, um, if it will be acceptable for a person to say they watched all the videos and now they, they can, they have the certification. Honestly, we, I don't even think we've thought that far. Okay. Um, in terms of that. Um, Stephanie, what I will tell you is one, one of the questions that Jane did pose to us is about, um, the image center, I mean, not the judges, centers for independent living right. um, and how they can, how we can work with the centers for independent living um, in providing this service as well. Because right now is we are looking at individuals. We're not looking at like organizations. We're looking okay. at individuals being, being able to provide the services. But I can tell you that um, um, Tony March, the director, we did talk about um, after the holidays, we're gonna talk about a way that we can work with the SEALs so that people are not um, um, so people are not being left out or services are not being hindered because it's through a program. Gotcha. Um, and I think the, the, the working it out is if you have a person at a seal who wants to do it individually, you know, those kind of things, are they going to be prohibited from that because they work at a seal? You know, they had the training. Um, you know, there's some nuances that we are working through here and then we were actually going to bring the sales to the table to see how we can do that because it will be the sales responsibility to make sure that person, when we send in a referral, that that person is, has their, their certificate to do it because we will be working with the seal and not with an individual. Correct. So and that is how working. I'm asking. Yeah, that's how I'm asking that question is, is as a seal. Um, now we will have three, three of us have gone through the trainings um i think it's just three of us um and two of us have already gotten referrals so okay, so to answer your question um no it is not retroactive um it, there has to be a certification and you have to go through the process so no it's not retroactive because it's not even in the system yet so it's not retroactive yours okay. does not do retroactive um, stuff so Sandra, this is imani i have a question um if we're already certified for pre ex and all of that, is it the same application process or is it totally different? That's Imani. Can you hear her? Yep, I can hear her. Mikasa, did you hear that? No. Is she said, Imani said, is it the same application process? They're already certified for pre ex services. Is it the same application process? No, I mean, you talk about become, if you are a vendor in our system, you don't have to submit another uh, vendor application, but it is. Uh, you have to be approved anyway. Okay. okay. But if you are a vendor in our system, no, you don't have no, you don't have to submit another vendor. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Come in. Okay. 
Um, and one other, th well, I I'll, let me answer the question first because it may come up. There's Jane and there's Cindy that I can see on my screen that have their hands raised. Yeah. Hi, um, I just wanted to add, this is Jane, and I just wanted to add to what Tandra is saying. And you're absolutely right, Tandra. We have not thought through the process of the example Stephanie gave where as an organization, they brought on new staff and they're in the process of getting them um, certified or rather trained to use the devices. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to take this back to my committee and just, you know, kind of think about it a little bit and get back with you on that, Stephanie. But I think that we'll be able to work this out. But I do want to see what um, the others have to say about this before I uh, say 100 percent that this is fine. Although, you know, we're, we'll be working in that direction for sure. OK. Um, and. Um, Yeah, I, I think that the video, the videos are on a YouTube channel on Marylanders Online, and that, again, as Vishnu said, people will be receiving a form that has them stating and attesting to them going through all the YouTube videos or attending the trainings to cover everything. We're asking, you know, we're trusting people to do what they're asked to do. And um, that's how we have it set up at this time for this pilot. Again, this is a learning experience for us. So things may change as we go along, but um, this is gonna get it off the ground. So we're really excited about everything that you're proposing, Tandra, and just excited for everybody. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And Cindy? Okay, sorry. Now I'm unmuted. Um, okay, what I wanted to ask was, is we've been training on several phones. How do we know, do we have to take all these phones to the client and let them determine which phone they want? Or how is that going to work? No, so uh, the... Yeah, Candace, the... And again, sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt you, but let me take this. So, Cindy, the process is that... Um, when people come to the MAT program, they apply, they're approved, they're assigned an evaluator who is a staff person with Maryland Accessible Telecommunication. Oh, thank you. That, that evaluator and the, the MAT customer will be the one to look at all the phones and come up with the appropriate solution. At that point, the MAT evaluator will contact a trainer and connect that trainer with the MAT customer. So the okay. the trainer won't be going through all the phones. They'll know oh, exactly which God. one the person will work with. Good, because I had nightmares. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't want you to have nightmares. <laughs> okay. Um. So the other thing is, of course, the person has to be a doors consumer. Um, and remember that some, some of the staff within doors are going through training as well. Um, and being certified um, or being a vendor does not guarantee work. So even if you're certified as a vendor, that does not mean that's not automatic that you're going to get, um, you're going to get referrals from doors to do training um, for that. If, um, so Jane, you mentioned, so, which is something that, uh, again, because this is so brand new, we're trying to work it out um, in terms of who, in terms of um, vendors. So what typically happens is if, if it's a doors consumer, and um, for example, um, one of the trainers from Matt, they recommend a telephone, um, then that information needs to go back to the counselor and the counselor will, from a list of who's ever certified, if they're not themselves certified to be able to do it, can select a person to do that training. Um, and that takes the, that way Matt doesn't have to say, okay, you, you know, this is who we selected to do. I mean, you can always make recommendations if there's someone in that area. 
Um, but ultimately, it's the counselor who will assign um, will assign a vendor to go out and do that training. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is Jan again, and that is spot on. That's perfect. Um, I have been compiling a spreadsheet that has a list of all the trainers, and mm -hmm. we will share that with your staff. We will That's expect excellent. our evaluators to be in touch with the doors counselor to let them know that, you know, the evaluation is complete and that it's now in their court to contact the um, appropriate trainer. Yes. Or, you know, to select from the list. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's great. I'm hoping that even um, that you know, eventually that we will even be able to have everyone like even in regions. So if you're, you if you only want to do stuff on the Eastern shore, or if you're statewide wide, or you only want Baltimore city and Baltimore County, um, you know, we have all of that so that it's easier to go through and say, okay, let me see who's available. Let me see, you know, in terms of doing um, referrals to the different vendors. That, yeah, that's correct, Tandra. I've already got that on the spreadsheet. So all Excellent. the trainers are identified by the region that they're willing to cover. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, Thompson, you had something? Yeah. For those who are uh, uh, trainers and haven't been to us yet as a vendor, I would recommend you go to Doors, to the website, and there is a form that you need to fill. And uh, you complete your W-9 and send those to me with your uh, resume. And uh, I don't know if Matt gives them any certificate or just- uh, Not yet, work. you're not done. Okay, but let's start with that. Let's send me, let's mm -hmm. send me the vendor application and the W-9. Okay. So what Mutasim, I don't know if you can hear him. What he's saying is even though um, we're still at the end of the process and it has not been, he said what you can do is if you go on the DOORS website, um, and I can also send this to you, Jane, just a link to um, the application. There's an application um, and there's also a W-9 that has to be filled out even before we get so we can have an idea. That way you can, you can start the process so that once you get your certificate, you can forward that to um, Mutasim, um, Faddle, and you know that process will be much more expedited for you because your other stuff is already in. And that those links, I, Jane, I will send to you. We will get get those to you, and then you can send it out to the list, you know, to the everyone who's on the um, the list. Thank you, Tandra. That would be great. Available, accessible W nine. I'll send that to you, Tandra. Okay. So um, Mutasim said there's a, a um, an accessible fill fillable W nine, um, and we'll make sure that we send that out. Fantastic! It'll be on the email that goes out after our session today, or whenever mm -hmm. I get it from you. Yeah. Yep. Um. I want to say. So um, what we also discussed, this is for people who are already like, um, like Torres, for example, who are already, they are certified AT providers. Um, we have the amount of $60 an hour. However, those who are already AT providers, um, they're already certified as an AT provider, not as the MAT rehabilitation specialist they will get their, their regular amount of $90 an hour, even if they're doing the MAT um, training. We're not taking, you know, we're not taking our AT vendors back in terms of cost, in terms of the fees. And all the AT providers, they know who they are. It looks like Tiffany? Yes, um, I have a couple of questions. One sure. being, that um, if you, um, if um, referrals come through the MAP program, um, that person who has a referral from the MAP program and has gone through an evaluation, they also have to have a um, doors counselor's recommendation or um, uh, I guess referral first, even though they've been cleared and evaluated through the MAP program? That's my first question. And my other question is regarding taxes. Um, the taxes are the responsibility of the, um, the vendor to deal with. That Yes, let me answer your second one first. Yes, okay. you get a 1099. 
Um, and yes, that is your responsibility to, to deal with anything as it relates to taxes. Yes, okay. you're not an employee, you're a vendor. The first part, I think, uh, let me just try based on what I think you're saying. So once the MAP program um, works with a doors consumer and they make a recommendation for a telephone, um, the, the phone is picked out and the person needs training, then we will contact the vendor to say, hey, we have uh, Joe Smo and he needs training. Um, are you available? We, here, we're gonna send you an authorization. That's how that works. That's, the, that's that process. And that Is that what you meant or did I not answer that? Um, yes, you did. Um, but that occurs after the person receives the device or before the person receives the device. They have to get DOORS um, authorization from their counselor before they can receive the device or? No, that's a, that's, that's a, that is outside of what we do. So we don't, we, we don't, we have no jurisdiction over Matt and when the person receives the phone. Um, and again, that's a very good question because it's something that has not, we didn't even talk about. Um, you know, once, um, uh, and Jane, I guess this is a question for you. Once um, a, a, a phone is identified, um, how does the, do we, does the phone go to the person and then they're waiting? You know, we didn't talk about that. Yeah. And, and how long does you. it take for the person to get the phone? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany, that was a, a good point. Thank you for bringing it up and Tim for um, also talking about it. Yeah, um, it really depends on which device the um, Mac customer will receive. We have some phones that we have readily available, some devices readily available that we can pretty immediately put in their hands. However, we also, and this pertains mostly to um, Apple products, if it's an iPhone, it could be several months, two to three months before it's available to the customer. So I think um, the only thing that we can do is just keep in touch with the doors counselor uh, to let them know when that device is actually being shipped out. Mm -hmm. Would you say what counselor? I think that's a good idea. Yep, that's a, that's a great idea. Um, we have Desmond. Hi, Tendra. Uh, so in terms of um, when we've trained a, the customer and um, we're, we've written up their report, if there are um, certain accessories outside of what, what the MAP programs provided, we might think be useful. Such as like say, hey, this person could use a Bluetooth keyboard with their iPhone. Um, can can we write that in the recommendations? Hi, Tandra, let me speak to that. I'm sorry, this is Jane. Um, Desmond, that's a great question. And if it turns out that a Bluetooth key keyboard is needed for their device, let us know at Matt because we do pro provide accessories, um, Bluetooth key keyboards. Um, lanyards to there's a, a new kind of lanyard called a slinger where the phone actually sticks to the lanyard they can wear it around their neck our um evaluators really try to speak to those details in their assessment but if it's missed and you find out something like that as you start working with the individual get back in touch with the evaluator and they'll take care of the MAP program will take care of getting that accessory. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that was an excellent question. I'm sorry, Tiffany, did I answer your question? Uh, I went right over to Desmond and I never came back to you. I apologize to see, make sure that I, I was clear. Oh, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> You were clear. Um, So I just... Yes. If a person um, gets a device from the MAP program, does that person have to contact their doors counselor? Um, they can just as a as, as a backup, but Matt is going to contact the doors counselor as well to say, "This is what we recommended. This is you know it'll be, the person has it in hand, or it may take you know several weeks for the person to get it, and we'll let you know when it's in or when it's shipped." 
So you, the person can, I mean, can absolutely call, always call their doors counselor. I mean, there's okay. no harm in having two, two notifications. So Matt knows um, which camp counselors are assigned to which person. They will, yes. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Yep, you're welcome. Um, looks like, let's see, Mr. Torres has his hand up. Look like, I don't know if that's Desmond, if that's your same hand, not sure. I think that was the same hand from Desmond, so we can take him so. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So let's say we have a situation where a particular phone was selected for a particular individual, and it turns out that that particular phone is not compatible with the user uh how many uh attempts does uh, a, a user a client have at finding the right phone um that meets their needs uh because these phones all have their own strengths and weaknesses and many times it <laughs> it uh it's not so easy to simply say oh yeah this phone will go with that person and vice versa um i've been doing this for 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 some time and there's some patterns that develop i'm not going to talk about them here but there's certain things that you kind of know simply being in the field that hey i don't think this phone is going to work with that person because of certain things that you've already seen in the past it doesn't always hold true but 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 that but there's definitely a pattern that i have seen when it comes to um uh, you know having different people work with you know one phone or the other um and so this is jane and i'm happy to speak with that the MAT program is more than happy. We recognize that even though our evaluators do the best that they can to try and identify the most appropriate solution, it doesn't always work out. In that case, they only need to contact us. It could be you or the individual. Get in touch with us. Um, we will provide a label. They can send the, the uh, old device back and we can provide them with another solution. So there's no problem with that. You know, usually we we have this happen quite often. Um, usually the second time around is, is the right fit, but okay. um, it's not like we have a limitation on, you know, it's saying that somebody can only do it twice. They can only try to, I mean, I wish that we could, have people trial phones for a while i mean it it may make better sense but right now in our system we don't do that but um um but there isn't really a limit on that and it is a rare occasion that someone would would not you know after two attempts at two different devices not be um able to find something that works with, for them so I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, thank you very much. Looks like Kenny. I'm not sure if that's Sabrina or Kenny has a question. Kenny or Sabrina, your hand is up, but you're muted. I don't know if you're talking, but it's still muted if you have a question. Mm 
Okay. All right. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? Um, what I will say is this is a work in progress. It's new. Um, and as we like to say in state government as a pilot. Um, so if things come up, things will come up. We get, we just have to work it through, talk it through. Um, if you have questions, of course, for, for Matt, you can call Jane. For the door side, you can call myself or Mutasim, especially as, as it relates to being a vendor. Um, and I'll, you'll have all that information. You'll have all the contact information who you need to talk with. Um, so if you have any questions. Hello, this is uh, Ansel again. Mm -hmm. I had I had a question. Okay. If it's all right. Yep. Okay. Um. So let me understand when a phone is sent uh, to the client. Um. I know in terms of the phones that we have received, uh, some of them have SIM cards and some of them. Some of them have SIM cards and they expire at the end of, I think, three months. And then some of them don't have SIM cards. Uh, so if I am showing up to train somebody, um, does that mean that there's a good possibility if there's a real SAM phone that th on that first day of training, that person would not have a SIM card in their phone? Or is that going to be taken care of before um, the trainer gets there. And so this is Jane, and that is um, a fair question. Um, at the MAP program provides the device. We emphasize to the individual that it's their responsibility to get their service in place. Mm -hmm. Um, therefore, the phones will not show up with a SIM card inserted in them. Now, I know that we experienced that with the Smart Vision 3, and um, that was a, a maybe a couple other Res products. That was a temporary thing, kind of new that they were trying, and more for the purpose of um, the top techs and train. Normally, our devices arrive with no SIM card in them. Now, as you know from our conversations about the real SAM, <clears throat> we are working on a way to make sure that it can be activated. And we're talking to our vendor Teltex about a device called an iWise box, which would plug into the phone, and plug into a router and automatically without using passwords or finding network names or anything like that um, would connect the device to the internet. That is a standard with yeah. our yeah. iPhones um, and not, and it may be with the real sound, um, but that would help in getting over that technicality of needing the internet for the voice guide to activate the real sound. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the other devices go, again, the SIM card and getting the plan set up is really the responsibility of the customer. Um, yes. Now, the thing is that many of these users are not uh, iPhone savvy, they're not tech savvy. Um, and a lot of these phones have their own peculiar uh, traits uh, in terms of how you insert the phone, insert the um, SIM card and which which port is the better port to insert the card. And I I guess I'm, I'm I'm a little concerned as to if if they were to simply take this to their nearest AT and T store, well, AT and T may not even be able to provide them because that phone may not work on the AT and T network. So there, there are a number of different uh, complicating factors there. Um, that, I mean, if if it's just left up to the uh, 
to the client, they can become very quickly, very frustrated unless they have someone hand holding them through the process. Um, I, I totally I, agree with you, Ansel. And not only that, many of the customers that we deal with are eligible for services like Lifeline, which is a whole other application process. Um, it's This is a really gray area. I don't know whether this could be something that, you know, perhaps the evaluator um, and I know that um, Betsy Hine is on this call and I invite her or Brenda um, if they're on to voice their opinions. But um, I do find myself at times going through the lifeline application process for people um, and setting up accounts for people and so forth. Um, but this can get pretty complicated and time consuming oh, yes. on our uh, end as well. Oh yes, it can. Mm -hmm. um, because, so when I heard that the limit of the hours <laughs> was, was six, I was actually in shock because it it may actually take two, if not four hours, just to get the phone ready for training, um, far less doing the training itself. So I I think that um, something definitely needs to be looked at. I mean, I think we need to definitely look at the that that setting up process um, for the for those phones um, in the hands of a clients who are not um, who are not tech savvy and ready to take on the intricacies of of setting up uh, um, you know whatever phone they might be getting. Uh, if it was something where you can just well take it down to the local store, and you know just get a card there, then that's that's great. But I actually was looking into this process myself with um, T-Mobile, um, and basically T-Mobile uh, said, you know, well if the SIM card you're getting is what is it, forty dollars a month, is is less than forty dollars a month. Uh, then um, they, you know, you have to order that over the web. Um, and so there's that other aspect um, to it. Um, I totally agree with you, Ansel. It's And Kendra, I don't know how aware you are of all of this process. In addition to that, the individual has to have an email. Often they don't. Yep. Um yeah, it's it gets really really complicated, and yes. believe me, it's it's way more than the mat. I mean, from the beginning, the mat program has always told people to qualify. You have to have your own landline. You have to have your own internet. But we are really being pulled into taking on this additional responsibility. And I just had a three and a half hour first time meeting where we took less than an hour to look at phones and we spent the rest of the time getting a SIM card account set up. Oh, you're so, right. so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. And right. I'm and, and that's you without without right and that's with you without a, a, a visual a visual disability. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it it is it's I'm open to suggestions. I really am. <laughs> I don't know if this is something that I I just I'm not really sure how to handle this. Mm -hmm. Um, this is Tandra. So um, <laughs> apparently I've been out of the that loop for a long time. Um, and so so thank you for the Ansel and Jane for giving me a, a visual. Um, whenever. We just did an, a, an estimate of what we thought in terms of training, not thinking about the SIM card. I didn't know any of that part, that piece and how to get it set up. Because in my in my mind, um, and apparently my mind is very wrong, the person gets the phone and they're ready. And you turn it on and you're ready to get started so you can learn the, the different nuances of the telephone. Um, so um, them needing to do other things in terms of getting set up. Yeah, I didn't even 
know that particular part um, and how that, you know, what that looks like, what that um, pertains, because we just remember that we don't usually, this is not the part that we usually do um, in terms of doors. Somebody else was doing it. So I don't know. And I never talked to people to say, you know, what, what is it exactly do you do? How many hours do you do doing this? Um, so, and, and the consumers have a, it seems like a really big part in terms of making sure they have their own service, which Doors does not do. We don't do anything in terms of pay, purchasing service for anyone. Um, so there are some things that absolutely need to be worked out and, and, and talked through. Um, but this is, I mean, this is a really, is a really good thing that we, you know, that this is happening now so we can talk about it and work through the things. Yeah, so some, then at some point we can, mm-hmm. it can be smooth. Well, yeah, I want to, mm-hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Hi, this is um Kenny. I, I, I want to maybe bring up a point, maybe, um maybe another training class. I mean, I, I mean, I'm familiar with SIM cards and setting up phones and everything, but like you said, other mm-hmm. trainers may not be. I mean, maybe another class or two or four hour class just explaining the basics. Because again, you can, um, I mean, get a 90 day free month T Mobile plan. So they'll have a SIM card until maybe um, the service where they can get discounted phone service comes in. There, there is a way around it, but it's just coming up with a system to say, okay, this person will definitely be ready. We know how to insert the SIM card. We know the phone they have, they will need maybe a, a Google account or an Apple account to make sure they can use the cloud services properly. So, I mean, maybe a, another class of some sort, just explaining the basis of setting up the phones for the trainers so they're not caught off guard with that. Because it is important because you're right, sometimes setting up a phone can take longer than a training depending on the client you're with. Exactly. Exactly. I I think I think there's there's going to have to if this is how the phones are going to be coming. If nobody's setting it up for the clients, I think there will need to be a set aside allocated amount of time just to set up the phone. Now there's some families, some clients have families that can can work this through because they're tech savvy, and they can make it happen. Uh, I've seen it, and and it's it's you know it's it's not a big deal. Um, but for people who don't, but for people who don't have support, um, the time definitely will be required. Yes, I would like to add as well an experience I had where a blind individual did not even have a debit card or a credit card that they could use to set an account up with. Mm. I mean, that eventually comes into play as well. You know, you you set up maybe the three month free trial with Mint Mobile, but eventually there has to be a debit card or a credit card yeah. involved so that, because that's the only way it can get paid. Right. And that's three months down the road. So, yeah. <laughs> I have, I do, this is Tandra, I'm, I'm, I have a question. So when, um, and this may be a Betsy question, um, once the assessment is over and, and it's determined, are the are the consumers notified that these are the things that you need? You have to have an email address. You have to have um, a credit card or a, a debit card. Like, are they given a list? These are things in order for your phone to work. And before you know, it, it, we can we can really help. These are the th- you have to have these things in place already. Is that Hi, something that we, that we just done? Yeah, this is Betsy. Um, So when I do an evaluation for cell phones, um, I go over all the different phones. And and then I always ask if they have an existing cell phone, who is your cell phone carrier? Because Mm -hmm. so many, you know, we only have the iPhone, the Pixel, and the real Sam that Verizon works with. You know, mm-hmm. so so there are certain carriers that don't work with some of these phones. Even with the government plan, um, some of some of those plans don't work with the phones that require T-Mobile. So I do go over all of that. Um, I do tell them that it's their responsibility. Like with the iPhone, it's now an eSIM card, so you just have to call and give them information to transfer it over. It's not a physical SIM card anymore. 
Um, but yeah, we go, I mean, I go over all of that. Um, I ask if they have family support that can help them set up their, um, you know, transfer the account over or set up a new account. Um, but, but what I find is that, um, they forget, they forget what, what your conversation that you had with them. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We had a discussion yesterday in the meeting that we were going to start after our evaluations, kind of doing follow up emails and just saying, this is what we've agreed to. This is blah, blah, blah. And, and for cell phones, that's probably something we should add into that email that remember. Um, but from like um, from the trainer's point of view, I mean, I think probably the first question you need to ask is, do you have a SIM card, an active SIM card in your phone yet working? so that you know before you get out there whether that's something that has to be dealt with or not. It's it's challenging. And, you know, I know that, uh, Diane, I don't know if you're still on the call, but I, with the blind shell, we had so many issues with um, people going into T-Mobile and T-Mobile not knowing how to put the SIM card in that phone. And Diane was kind enough to call the local T-Mobile and give them instructions so that they could help the customer. But it has been a challenge. Yeah, I'm I'm here. Um, yeah, it is a challenge. One thing that I would suggest though, maybe is the first session, show them the phone. Like for example, the blind shell, what I would do is get their blind shell connected to Wi-Fi. show them all the features on it, show them how to operate it, the, the menus, the up and down, the okay, the back, make sure that it's going to be the right phone for them. I know Jane's evaluators do do a great job, but just to double check to make sure that it is the best phone for them and then get into the complexity of how to activate it. I mean, everybody will have their own demo phone that they could put a SIM card in and say, okay, so next time when you get your SIM card all set up, this is how you would make a phone call. This is how you would do a text message. They might say, oh my gosh, that's just so complicated. I don't know if I could do that. Uh, you know, Or they may say, wow, I'm really psyched now. I'm gonna go tomorrow and get that SIM card. I agree with that. Um, I had my hand up, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, second Diane. Um, as a teacher, and again, I don't want this to be about teaching or TVIs. But I just know instructing students, instructing individuals is good to have it systematic, maybe a checklist or a cheat sheet, like, you know, visit one. This is, you know, like Diane said, some of the things that you can do, visit two, because we're just kind of grabbing for, for straws at this point and kind of coming up with our own. But it would be nice to have a nice little lesson plan or some kind of plan of action. <laughs> For each yeah. visit when we go into uh, working with individuals, no matter what device it is, just an, a general outline. And then secondly, Diane recommended Tello last week, I think, or a week before. I already have, I went ahead and ordered it. Thanks, Diane. I have two big unlimited checks in for $10. Yeah. And they even have a $5 plan. So it's like, it's very cost effective. I mean, I can say that because I have a job, but I don't know for individuals if $5 would be a hardship or not, but I just did everything online. They sent me the SIM card. Of course, I have a site, so I was able to pop it in. I, went, I put it into my iPhone, my personal iPhone, and it worked for no problem. Again, there are different phones, different carriers. That's another cheat sheet that would be good for us to have so that we'll know which phones go with which carriers as well. So Erica, just to... to bounce off of something you just said. So the first time I got my Tello SIM card in the mail, I was like, okay, I need to do this by myself. So it was through a combination of me calling Tello saying, okay, what do I do with this piece of plastic you sent me? And then calling Be My Eyes and saying, okay, help me, line me up to where the micro size is so I know where to punch this out. And then I was able to do it 100% by myself. So even something like that, to get the person motivated to do it for themselves. I know not everybody can, but there's going to be many cases where they can. And they, they need to have some skin in the game themselves. I like that. <laughs> Tello, Tello is good, but 
I mean, some students got to understand with the data, you only allow one or two gigs of data a month. And then they found out something isn't working on their phone, said, well, you used up all your data. So it is a cheap plan, but you got to remember it's unlimited talk, unlimited text, but it's, they went up to just two gigs of data a month. And but that you can, can get unlimited for $25 a month if somebody okay. wanted to do that. Yeah. And of course, staying on Wi-Fi is key when you're at home. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Wi-Fi calling and everything. Can I um, shift gears for a second? Yes. Um, okay. This is yeah. Debbie Williamson. Yeah, um, go ahead. I'm, I'm a door staff person. I get what this conversation has been all about. But those of us from doors who have actually attended this training, I don't understand how we fit in. Um, so in terms of, so, so in terms of the staff there, if you have a person, I mean, you, you, number one, you're more knowledgeable about it because you, you know, the phone. So if someone says, I have this, um, you may be able to, or sometimes you may not be able to, some of our teachers have so many people now that they don't really have the time. They're still going to bring in a vendor to help them. The fact that you have that knowledge and that information um, to be able to talk with them, to help them, even if they call and say, I, I, I just don't know how to, can you just tell me how to turn it on? Or can you tell me who I, who I can call? Um, you know, like I, I, um, someone was talking about the cheat sheets. Um, you have, um, um, you know, these are, the, these are the carriers that you can use. You can use T-Mobile or, Ver um, or Verizon or this, um, just having that information. So depending on where you are in terms of the teacher, where you live, um, everybody's going to have a different um, role in terms of what they do with it in terms of our staff. And that's something that we, we can talk more about offline as well. Tandra, I want to, I'm sorry, this is Kenny again. Well, my original question uh, was regarding the referrals, I guess, when they come from the MAP program to doors. Now, mm -hmm. Is that put in a pool where you you uh each uh trainer get equal access so you don't have one trainer with five referrals and maybe others don't have one like how how is that trade how is those referrals cycled out to the trainers to be a fair there's, process for everyone? There's no such thing as a fair process when it comes to vendors. <laughs> I'm oh. just being honest. There is no there, okay. there's no guarantee of anything when you become a vendor. It is just when it, whenever the um, is whoever the teachers select as a vendor. Um, okay. I can tell you that depending on how many come in, um, in terms of you know uh, how many doors consumers come in and need training, um, and who people feel comfortable with, if they know who you are, they know you're going to uh, provide services. You have vendors who may be slow at the gate and never get us reports. I can tell you that if that's that vendor probably won't get that many referrals just because of, um, you know, poor work habits, and then others okay. will. But they, we don't have a, a a system in place where we say, well, we got we got to give this one too because we gave that one through it. No, we don't. Okay. That's not how that works. Um, but what 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 when you become a vendor, all the counselors, the the staff get. A, uh, an email saying this person is now a vendor and they can provide these services, they work in this area. And we also have an internal sheet where we, when we're working with AT providers, where we're working with, we have teachers, we have counselors, the same thing will be for these MAP rehabilitation specialists. Um, and counselors will be able to go and say, oh, I know Kenny only works in Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna send one to him. Um, okay. So yeah, but no, there's no, <laughs> quote unquote fair way um, to do that. That's All just right. that we don't we don't work that way with um with vendors. Okay. Hey this is Desmond. Last hand. Is it okay um if I go ahead and jump in? Yes and then Desmond you can Desmond can you go next? Oh sure absolutely okay oh. thank you Pardon me. Um, uh, well, I, I wanted to say um, thank you so much for everything. Um, I do think that the automation and the checklist that Erica spoke about 
um, as well as Diane with regards to self-determination skills, that those comments were spot on. But as it relates to um, how, as it relates to making sure the client is on Wi-Fi, we're kind of making an assumption that Wi-Fi is going to be available in the home. So I'm thinking that as vendors, we may need to provide our own hotspots to travel with us if one's not provided to us. Because the Wi-Fi might not be reliable in the home that we go to either. Thank you for that point. This is Jane. Um, that's a good point. And um, that's also something that our evaluators um, question as well, if they have Wi-Fi and so forth. So thank okay. you. Thank you. Desmond, before you go, I just want to say, you know, there's so many moving parts to this. Um, it's just interesting that, you know, all of these, you know, brilliant minds on, on the call, you have so many good questions, such rich questions, and I'm very grateful for them. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's as close as we get to it, we still have so much further to go. Um, but the good thing is that we have people who are willing um, we have the agency, you know, Doris, who has agreed to, to go ahead and say, you know what, we go, we're going to jump in both feet. Um, and so I'm just glad and happy that you all took the, you know, took the opportunity and a chance to say, you know what, I want you raised your hand. You said, I'm going to do this because it's so beneficial. It's so needed for so many of our consumers, especially out there where Deb is in the Western, um, Western Maryland. Um, there's so many people who really need the service. And we just going to continue, just know that we are going to continue to do all that we can do um, within, within the confounds of what the state or the state of Maryland will allow us to do. Um, but it's going to take all of us to really help people because there's so many pieces and missing, you know, things people may not have this or have that. Some people have more resources in terms of vendors. Some people may have, you know, their phone as a hotspot. Other people have other hotspots. Um, you know, just I don't think I'm asking for is your patience as we work through it all. Um, but just know that we have uh, we all have the best interest at heart for the consumers that we serve. And we're going to do our very best to make sure this is one of the premier programs. And we're going to have our chest so poked out so far when we go on national news and talk about how how well th this is going in Maryland. So just just. If you, you, a lot of you don't know me, so don't trust me, but trust the process. It, it, it'll get there. It'll get there. So, Desmond? Yeah, and I was going to ask, um, in terms of um, approaches to evaluating uh, how the program's going as, you know, we go through and kind of refine it, uh, has it been thought to maybe doing like a quarterly or, you know, whatever the interval is, uh, survey to the vendors just to see, you know, what's working, what, what's not working, um, that kind of thing? Um, this is maybe. Jane. Yeah, um, Desmond, one of our visions for follow-up is to get together every quarter um, as a group of trainers so that we can get feedback from you as far as um, those things, what's working, what's not working, and about the device as well. You know, as a result of many of our sessions over the past couple of months, I think we've given the vendor, the, the product representative, good ideas about some things that need to be tweaked within their product. So again, thank you so much. This is a work in progress and we're really happy with, with everything that's happening. And I wanted to come in and give the friendly time reminder. I know we all, we really enjoy this active conversation in the community, but we are at the closing of our hour. It is 4.08. Um, so I think uh, if we can be respectful of the time and wrap our session here today, uh, unless anyone has any other pressing question, we'd like to make that last call. Um, and if not, then I want to wish everyone happy holidays, happy new year. Um, and I wish for everyone to have uh, a healthy, 
a peaceful and warm new year, hopefully. <laughs> it's very cold right now, but yeah. DJ, do you have anything else to add to this? Um, thank you so much, Vishnu. It's been absolutely a wonderful conversation. I'm so delighted, Kendra. I'm sitting here with my camera off and I'm doing happy dances. So it's been <laughs> great. Um, and I look at, forward to seeing everybody in the new year and you gave them, you've all given us such great ideas. We're excited to put them to work. Um, so thank you so much. And yeah, yeah have a we'll wonderful holiday on. season. Yes, we'll see you on January 2nd at 5 p.m. and we'll be using the same link. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you. Have a good one, everybody. Happy holidays. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Thank you, everyone.